Hey, what's good, everybody? So UFC 298 had a little something for everybody. We had some weird, cringy billionaires. And we had a lackluster UFC 300 main event title announcement. Alex Pereira defending his light heavyweight title against Jamal Hill. But in this video, I want to focus on the press conference after the fights. So let's just start with the UFC 300 main event. Last thing I'll just ask you about the UFC 300 main event. Uh, you know, you talked about all the drama that it took building up to it and all the options you looked at. Why did you settle on what you settled and what are your thoughts on the fight? I wouldn't say that I settled. Uh... I would call it settling. Don't you remember what you promised, you bloody wanker? When I'm ready to give you the main event, you'll get it. You're not ready yet. You can't handle the main event. Well, tickle me pickle, Dana White. Me mind is effing blown. I settled, decided on. Oh, it's an apology. Um, yeah. Listen, we we were out there talking to lots of people, trying to make lots of fights, and uh, in this business, it's about it's about taking opportunities. Headlining UFC 300 with all the buzz and all the energy around it. Let, let me let me say this. Leon Edwards, Leon Edwards never. Leon Edwards has had like three opponents throughout this thing. Leon Edwards doesn't say no to anybody. Th this kid is an absolute stud. Um, he's had like three opponents thrown at him dur during UFC 300. Yes, yes, yes. Was willing to take on anybody, man. Kid's an absolute stud. Leon, thank you. Much respect. I've been racking my brain all day trying to figure out who they offered the fight to. Do you think Kamzat was one? DDP was another? Who would be the third? I'm I'm about ninety percent sure on those first two guys. Uh, another Irishman on this card, Ian Gary, uh, didn't really have a nice performance. Pretty listless by all most regards. What do you make of his uh, performance tonight? What do you mean by listless? What, what... Ian Gary is the reason why motels have that one lone chair in the corner. I don't got enough time to talk about this guy. So all I'm going to say is his fight was a complete snooze fest. The guy was talking shit all year about Jeff Neal saying, Oh, I'm going to get this guy. Oh, I'm going to kill him. Oh, boy, boy. Like, shut up. Ian got in that octagon, and I swear he must have ran a 4K. That guy was skating around that octagon all night. There's nothing dynamic about this kid. His last two fights against the Neals were so boring. I just, I honestly, I kept flicking to the hockey game because uh, his fight literally sucked that bad. I paid for the pay-per-view and ended up doing that. But I digress. Just judging by the crowd's reaction and uh, the way the fight unfolded. So what do you mean? <laughs> Talk to me. To what, get... what did you hate about that fight? Just what? <laughs> oh, he's back there. Hey, Ian. This guy thinks your fight sucked tonight. Uh, he wants to know my opinion on your fight sucking tonight. Uh. <laughs> I absolutely love that he was standing there while that guy asked that question. Too funny. Uh, next, let's talk about Cejudo not getting an octagon goodbye. Yeah, uh, Henry Cejudo said that he would retire if he didn't win tonight. The gloves were off. He didn't get to go on the mic after the fight. What's his status and uh, that I have no idea. Um, that I have no idea. Listen, Marab was in a position where um, he wouldn't fight his friend. You know how we love that here when you won't do that. So you know, I I, I haven't been thrilled with Marab. I I don't like that attitude. Uh, you fight everybody, you do whatever. Marab went in there tonight. And he beat the former champion, Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo... So I got to agree with Dana White on this one. Henry retired and tried to melt the company for more money. That is well known. He never had a huge fan base. So Henry's got no one else to blame but him. Okay. He did the whole drop the gloves thing. Tonight was Marab's night. Marab went in there. He fought the number three guy in the world, former world champion. He won easily, won the fight. Tonight was Marab's night. If... if, if uh, if he wants to retire again, he could do that here or somewhere else. You don't give the mic to, to Cejudo tonight. Tonight was Marab's night. Thank you. Woo! 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 
All right, folks. Lastly, we got to figure out who is lying, Dana White or Conor McGregor. I'm glad this reporter asked this question, but it still got us nowhere. <laughs> right over here, Dana. Yes, sir. Uh, with, with regard to Conor McGregor, what, what is the holdup with his return? What do you mean? Well, I mean, he, the uh, Ultimate Fighter was over back in August, and I can't imagine the plan was for him to be out as long as he's been. Well, the first problem was that he broke that shin bone. He was recovering from that. That, that was one of the reasons we had it. And the other problem is he's fucking rich. <laughs> and how does that present uh, an issue to you with negotiations? <coughs> what do you mean? Well, this, uh, I'll ask, does Conor McGregor... Conor uh, McGregor doesn't need money. So are we at a point here where Conor McGregor may never fight for the UFC? Can you say that? If you had shitloads of money, would you be sitting here right now asking me this fucking question? No. No, you would not. That just answered your question. So he, so, well, I answered no. So, but I was at, so you're saying there's a, there's a chance that Conor McGregor will not fight again for the UFC? I don't know. Conor McGregor's got a lot of money. And, uh, you know, anytime we get Conor, we'll be happy to... You know, be thrilled when when he comes and fights. But um, money complicates a lot of things. He just filmed a movie. He's got to do the uh, the press for the movie, and he's so basically we got a bunch of gobbledygook. We don't know what's going on with Connor. I don't know if he's in a contract dispute. I don't know if Dana White's telling the truth. It is just too crazy. Not that I even really care because it's not like Connor is coming back to like go after belt or anything he's just looking for legacy fights personally this is what i think happens every time connor goes to a boxing match or watches a fight on tv he gets that itch and he sees the crowd and it gives him all this energy that plus the cocaine and he just he really wants to fight in that moment but he's like a kid with a new toy you know he gets bored of it the next day so maybe Dana White's telling the truth. Maybe this isn't a contract dispute. So let me know what you guys think on that. And um, just let me talk about UFC 298 as a whole now. Um, I thought it was a decent card. Better than 297, that's for sure. Even Dana White admitted that he owes a Canada one for that shitty card. But uh, I actually knew Taporia was probably going to come out on top. I said if Volk was going to win, it was going to be by decision. But if Taporia won, it would be by knockout. So obviously, I, I didn't nail it. I called two people to win. But I just had that feeling in my gut, you know, that uh, Taporia had this. But, um, yeah, let me know. What do you guys think of UFC 298? What do you think of the UFC 300 main event? That is pretty lackluster. Jamal Hill. Is Jamal Hill a UFC 300 main eventer do you guys believe this i don't believe it i honestly think jamal's almost like uh he's like a big country nelson he almost always looks out of shape but as i don't know i i don't i tried to like jamal but if you guys have him on twitter you can probably know where i'm coming from that he's just an annoying cry baby but that's all i got for today like the video don't like the video if you don't want to hear from me again. If you made it this far, cheers. I'd really like to get uh, some feedback if you guys like this style of video or if you like my old style where I kind of just get high and just record my screen. Uh, let me know in the comments. Cheers.